Your test tomorrow is on sections 5-4 and 5-5. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Your, your test is either 12 or 15 questions. Like I said, I can't remember off the top of my head, but it's either one of the two, 12 or 15. Um, we're going to go through or try to go through each of these during your class today. The first half of them or first part of them, um, you're just multiplying. Okay, second part, it tells you find the greatest common factor, factor out the greatest common factor, um, factor by grouping, factor using the difference of squares, factor using the perfect square trinomial method, and then factor each polynomial completely. Tomorrow, on your test, it will not tell you, it will not prompt you what method to use. You will just have to look at it and see, I need to factor completely. Can I factor out a greatest common factor? If so, factor that out first. From there, do you have two terms, three terms, or four, ter four terms? If you have two terms, it's most likely going to be a perfect square trino or a difference of squares. If there's three terms, most likely it's going to be a perfect square trinomial. If there's four, factor by grouping. Okay? So with those, you got to ask yourself those questions. Walk yourself through them in order to find your final answer because it's not going to prompt you on which method to use. The first section that we're looking at, we're just multiplying. So number one, we have five x, negative five x cubed y times two x y to the third power. Remember when we're multiplying terms, your, mono, your coefficients get multiplied by each other. And then if your bases are the same, you're gonna keep the base and add your powers. If there's not a power on a term, like with the y in the first set of parentheses or the x in the second set of parentheses, your power is just one. So if we multiply these, the negative five multiplies with the two, you have x cubed and x to the first power. So you multiply those powers, or sorry, you add those powers. Then you have y to the first power and y to the third power. So you add those powers. So negative five times two is negative 10. X to the third plus the first is x to the fourth power. Then y to the first plus the third is y to the fourth power. So we just have negative 10, x to the fourth power, y to the fourth power. For number two, we have negative 6x squared times 2x minus 3. Remember with these, if you have something on the outside of parentheses, it's going to get distributed into what's inside those parentheses. So it gets multiplied by every term inside the parentheses. So you're going to do the negative 6x squared times 2x, which gives us negative 12x to the third power. Remember, multiply those coefficients, then add the powers on the x's. Then you have negative 6x squared times negative 3, which gives us a positive 18x squared. Remember with these also, if you do have like terms, you need to simplify completely and combine those like terms. Here, yes, you have an x on both of those terms, but their powers are not the same, so you are not combining their coefficients. For number three, we have w plus 2 times w squared minus 2w plus 4. So we're going to start by distributing the w into that trinomial. So w times w squared is w cubed. Then w times negative 2w is negative 2w squared. Then w times 4 is 4w. Then we'll do the 2 times w squared, which is positive 2w squared. Then 2 times negative 2w is negative 4w. And 2 times 4 is 8. From here, we're just going to combine like terms. That w cubed gets dropped down. The negative 2w squared plus 2w squared are opposites, so those cancel. The 4w minus 4w, those are opposites, so they cancel out. And that 8 gets dropped down. So it's just w cubed plus 8. For number four, you have two x, or sorry, two minus three x times four x minus seven. Number four, number five are, they look kind of similar, but number five has that two minus three x in parentheses. There are two different problems. So the number four, that negative three x is the only thing in front of the parentheses, and it's not in parentheses. So that's the only thing you're distributing into the set of parentheses. Number five, you have parentheses around the 2 minus 3x, so you're going to FOIL that one. So again, two different problems. For number four, though, 
So we're distributing the negative 3x in. So we're going to do the negative 3x times the 4x. That 2 stays. So we're just going to drop that down. Then again, the negative 3x times 4x is negative 12x squared. And then the negative 3x times the negative 7 is a positive 21x. Technically, with this, you would put it in standard form. I'm not going to ask you tomorrow to put it in standard form. But if it really bothers you, you can rewrite it to where it's just negative 12x squared plus 21x plus 2. And you can give that as your answer. Again, either one of these I would take. As long as the sign in front of the term is the correct sign, it's fine. For number 5, we have... 2 minus 3x in parentheses times 4x minus 7. Because that 2 minus 3x is in parentheses, like we said prior, we are going to FOIL this one. So we're going to start by doing the 2 times 4x, which is 8x. Then the 2 times negative 7 is negative 14. The negative 3x times 4x is negative 12x squared. And then the negative 3x times negative 7 is a positive 21x. You want to combine your like terms here. You have the 8x and the 21x that combine to give you like terms, or that are like terms. So that combines, and you're left with negative 12x squared plus 29x minus 14. For number 6, you have 4a minus 3b raised to the second power. For this one, you could do this one of two ways. You can either expand this to be 4a minus 3b times 4a minus 3b, or you can use your perfect square trinomial um, method. In this one, your a is the 4a. Your b is the 3b. The sign between the two terms is negative, so you're going to use a squared minus 2 times a times b plus b squared. This is going to give us 4a to the second power minus 2 times 4a times 3b plus 3b to the second power. If we simplify this, this gives us 16a squared minus 24ab plus 9 b squared. If you were to FOIL this out, you would just do the 4a times the 4a minus 3b, then the negative 3b times 4a minus 3b, combine your like terms, and you'd be left with the same exact thing that you see here. For number 7, you have 9a plus 5 times 9a minus 5. You have a difference of squares here because your a from both terms is the 9a, and your b from both terms is the 5. And they're separated by different signs. So if a is equal to 9a and b is equal to 5, and you have different signs between these two, you are going to use a squared minus b squared. So we're just going to plug these in. We're going to have 9a to the second power minus 5 to the second power, which gives us a final answer of 81a squared minus 25. Number eight, you have a plus five cubed. With this one, because you have that cubed, you can either separate it into a plus five times a plus five times a plus five, or you can separate it into a plus five times a plus five squared. That a plus five squared, you know that you can use a squared plus two times a times b plus b squared, and that would leave you with a plus five times a squared plus 10a plus 25. If we then multiply this out, that a times a squared is a cubed. a times 10a is 10a squared. a times 25 is 25a. The 5 times a squared is 5a squared. The 5 times 10a is 50a. And the 5 times 25 is 125. So from here, you're just going to combine like terms. So this is going to give you a cubed plus 15 
a squared plus 75a plus 125. And that's your final answer. For number 9, we have a minus 3 to the 4th power. This is the same thing, like I said, with the other one. You can do a minus 3 times a minus 3 times a minus 3 times a minus 3. Foil it all out and foil it again kind of thing. Or you can treat this as a minus 3 squared times a minus 3 squared. You have an a minus b raised to the second power, so you would use the formula a squared minus 2 times a times b plus b squared. If you were to do that with this one, you would just be multiplying a squared minus 6a plus 9 times a squared minus 6a plus 9. If you multiply this, the a squared goes into the second set of parentheses first. So a squared times a squared is a to the fourth power. Then a squared times negative 6a is negative 6a cubed. Then a squared times 9 is 9a squared. Next, you do the negative 6a. So negative 6a times a squared is negative 6a cubed. Negative 6a times negative 6a is a positive 36a squared. Then negative 6a times 9 is negative 54a. Next, you would do the 9. So 9 times a squared is 9a squared. 9 times negative 6a is negative 54a. And 9 times 9 is 81. From here, you're just combining your like terms. So it's going to give you a to the fourth power minus 12a cubed plus 54 a squared minus 108a plus 81. For number 10, you have x plus 2 times 3x plus 4y minus 5. So we're going to start by doing the x times 3x. That's 3x squared. Then x times 4y is 12xy, or sorry, 4xy, 4xy, then x times negative 5 is negative 5x. From here, distribute in the 2. So 2 times 3x is 6x, 2 times 4y is 8y, and 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. When you combine like terms, this just leaves you with 3x squared plus 4xy plus x plus 8y minus 10. <coughs> For 11, you have 3x squared times 5x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. We're just going to distribute in this 3x squared. So remember, your rules for multiplying bases that are the same. Your 3x squared times 5x cubed gives us 15x to the fifth power. 3x squared times negative 2x squared is negative 6x to the fourth power. 3x squared times 4x is positive 12x cubed. And 3x squared times negative 5 is negative 15x squared. There are no like terms here, so your 15x to the 5th power minus 6x to the 4th power plus 12x cubed minus 15x squared is your answer. For number 12, we have 2x squared y times y squared minus 5y plus 7. For this one, we're just going to distribute the 2x squared y in. So 2x squared y times y squared is going to give you 2x squared y cubed then the 2x squared y times negative 5y is negative 10x squared y squared. And 2x squared y times 7 is 14x squared y. Again, no like terms, so that is your answer. For number 13, you have x squared minus, or sorry, 2x squared minus 3x minus 6 
times x squared plus 5x plus 3. We're going to start by distributing the 2x squared. So the 2x squared times x squared is 2x to the fourth power. 2x squared times 5x is 10x cubed. 2x squared times 3 is 6x squared. From here, do the same with the negative 3x. Negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x times 5 is negative 15x squared. Negative 3x times 3 is negative 9x. Next, you do the same with the negative 6. So negative 6 times x squared is negative 6x squared. Negative 6 times 5x is negative 30x. Negative 6 times 3 is negative 18. Combine your like terms. This gives you 2x to the fourth power plus 7x cubed minus 15x squared minus 39x minus 18. For 14 and 15, we're finding the greatest common factor. For 14, we have 14x squared y cubed and 28x to the fifth power. That 14 has factors of 1 and 14, 2 and 7. The 28 is 1 and 28, 2 and 14, 4 and 7. Your like terms are the 1, the 2, the 7, and the 14. The greatest common factor are the 14s. So that 14 is going to be your coefficient. Do both of your terms have an x? Yes. yes. So the lowest power there is x squared, so you keep the x squared. Do both terms have a y? No. no. So you do not include the y in your greatest common factor. So it's just 14x squared. For 15, we have 24x cubed y squared, 48xy squared, and 84x cubed y cubed. For the 24, we're going to have factors of 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 4 and 6. For the 48, that's 1 and 48, 2 and 24, 3 and 16, 4 and 12, 6 and 8. The 84 is 1 and 84, 2 and 42, 3 and 28, 4 and 21. 5 doesn't go into it. 6 goes into it 14 times. 7 goes into it 12 times. 8 does not go into it. 9 does not go into it. 10 does not go into it. 11 does not go into it. So out of these... Your like factors are 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, uh, no 8, 12 is in all 3, and then 24 is only in 2 out of the 3. So the greatest common factor here is your 12. Next, look at your variables. Does every term have an x in it? What's the smallest power on the x? Just 1. So it's going to be just x. Does every term have a y? What's the smallest power on the y? So it gets an, a y squared. So it's just 12xy squared. For number 16, we have eight, negative 18x cubed plus 9x minus 54. We're factoring out the greatest common factor from this. The negative 18, the 9, and the 54 all share a common factor of 9. We said that if the first term is negative, we're also factoring out a negative. Not every term has an x, so we do not factor out an x. So our greatest common factor from all three of these terms is negative 9. That negative 9 is going to go out front. Whatever's left over goes in parentheses. So negative 18x cubed divided by 9, negative 9 is 2x cubed. 9x divided by negative 9 is negative x. And negative 54 divided by negative 9 is a positive 6. 
So it's just negative 9 times 2x cubed minus x plus 6. Verse 17, we have negative 24x cubed y squared minus 16x to the fourth power plus 32x cubed. Your first term is negative, so you know you're factoring out a negative. The 24, the 16, and the 32 are all divisible by 8. Each term has an x. The smallest power on the x is the 3. Only one of those terms has a y, so you're not going to include that. So your greatest common factor here is negative 8x cubed. So if that goes out front, the negative 24 divided by negative 8 is positive 3. x cubed divided by x cubed cancels out. The y squared is left over. That's 3y squared. The negative 16 divided by negative 8 is a positive 2. The x to the fourth divided by x is x. Then the 32 divided by negative 8 is negative 4. x cubed divided by x cubed is canceling out. So we just have negative 8x cubed times 3y squared plus 2x minus 4 as our answer. For 18, we are factoring by grouping. You have 5 times 3y plus 4 minus 8 times 3y plus 4. Those two sets of parentheses are identical to one another. So we're going to rewrite one of them and then form another set of parentheses with what's in front of that. So that 5x and that minus 8 form a set of parentheses. So you just have 3y plus 4 times 5x minus 8. For 19, we have 3x minus 5x squared, min or sorry, 3x plus 5x squared, Minus 6x minus 30. You, are, you have four terms here. You don't, they don't share a greatest common factor, so factor it by grouping. Group the first two terms. Group the last two terms. Between the first two terms, the x cubed plus 5x squared, your greatest common factor is x squared. Between the last two terms, the negative 6x and the negative 30, your greatest common factor is negative 6. So we're going to rewrite this as x squared times x plus 5, minus 6, times x, plus 5. Your two sets of parentheses here are identical to one another, so we're going to rewrite the x plus 5 one time and then form another set of parentheses with what you factored out, which is the x squared and the negative 6. The x squared minus 6. Yes, you have an x squared there, but it is not a, perf or a difference of squares because you cannot take the square root of the 6. So your only answer here is the x plus 5 times x squared minus 6. For 20, we have 2xy plus 4x plus 7y plus 14. For this one, if you factor this by grouping, you're going to group the first two terms, you're going to group the last two terms. Factor out the greatest common factor from both sets of parentheses that you formed. From the first two terms, your greatest common factor is 2x. From the last two terms, your greatest common factor is just 7. So this gets rewritten as 2x times what's left over, y plus 2. Plus 7 times what's left over, y plus 2. The two parentheses that you have left now are identical to one another. So since they're identical to one another, Rewrite that y plus 2 one time and then form another set of parentheses with what you factored out. You factored out a 2x and a positive 7. So that gives you the 2x plus 7 after the y plus 2. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. You're fine. For 21... You have 18x to the fourth power plus 24x cubed minus 27x squared minus 36x. You have four terms. Key indicator, factor by grouping. First off, do you have a greatest common factor? Yeah. What? Three. So they're all divisible by three. Yes. Six X. Negative. Does, does, six, does six go into 27 evenly? So it's just the 3. 9 does not go into 24 evenly. It's just 3x. So factor out the 3x first. 
the three X goes out front, you're gonna have six X to the third power plus eight X squared minus nine X minus 12. From here, factor by grouping. You have four terms left in this set of parentheses. So group the first two terms together, group the last two terms together, and factor out their greatest common factors. From the 6x cubed and the 8x squared, their greatest common factor is 2x squared. From the second set of parentheses, your greatest common factor between the negative 9x and the negative 12 is a negative 3. So if we rewrite this, that 3x is going to stay out front. You then have 2x squared times 3x plus 4 minus 3 times 3x plus 4. Now, the two sets of parentheses on the inside are the same. So you can rewrite this to be the 3x times 3x plus 4. And then your next set of parentheses gets the 2x squared and the negative 3. Now you have a binomial where you have an x squared in it. Is it a difference of squares? Can you take the square root of 2x squared? No. So you can't factor that any further. So this is your answer. For 22, you have 16x squared minus 9. You do not have a greatest common factor between the 16x squared and the 9. So you're going to factor this using the difference of squares since it's a binomial and you can take the square root of the first term you can take the square root of the last term and it's separated with subtraction so the square root of the first term is 4x the square root of the last term is 3 the subtraction tells you to use a minus b times a plus b so your a is 4x your b is 3 so that's going to give you 4x minus 3 times 4x plus 3 Remember, these are interchangeable, which means you could also write it as 4x plus 3 times 4x minus 3. It's the same exact thing. For 23, you have 4x squared minus 25y squared. You do not have a greatest common factor between these two terms. So ask yourself, can you take the square root of the 4x squared? Yes, it's 2x. Can you take the square root of the 25y squared? Yes, it's 5y. What separates the two? Subtraction. So you can use a plus b times a minus b, or a minus b times a plus b. doesn't matter. So if we plug in our a, which is 2x, and our b, which is 5y, this is going to give us 2x plus 5y times 2x minus 5y. For 24, you have x squared plus 18x plus 81. You can take the square root of the x squared. You can take the square root of the 81. The sign between, or so, no, sorry, the sign for the middle term is positive. So if you do 2 times the square root of x squared, which is x, times the square root of 81, which is 9, it should give you that 18x squared, or the 18x, which it does. So you can use the formula a plus b to the second power. Your a is the square root of x squared. So that's x. Your b is the square root of the 81, so that's 9. So it's x plus 9 to the second power. And this one you know to use that because it's a trinomial. So if it's a trinomial and you can take the square root of the first term and the last term, and the sign in the middle is positive, check your positive 2 times a times b. See if it gives you that middle term. If it does, use your formula a plus b to the second power. For 25, you have x squared minus 6xy plus 9y squared. You can take the square root of that x squared. It's x. You can take the square root of that 9y squared. It's 3y. If you use negative 2 times x times 3y, it should give you the negative 6xy, which it does. Use the formula x, or sorry, a minus b to the second power. Your a is the x, your b is the 3y, so that's x minus 3y to the second power. 
for 26 through 29, we are factoring out the greatest common factor and then factoring completely. For 26, you have 27x cubed minus 12x. Do we have a greatest common factor? What is our greatest common factor? Three what? So the 3x goes out front. You have 9x squared minus 4 left over. There's two terms. It's a binomial. See if it's a difference of squares. Sign that separates is subtraction. You can take the square root of that 9x squared. It's 3x. You can take the square root of that 4. It's 2. It's definitely a difference of squares. So use the 3x that's out front and then 3x minus 2 times 3x plus 2. Again, these are interchangeable. So you could also write 3x times 3x plus 2 times 3x minus 2. It's the same exact thing. For 27, we have 125x squared minus 45y squared. Do we have a greatest common factor? Does 15 go into 125? I don't think 15 goes into 125 evenly. No, it doesn't. 5 does, though. So if we factor out the 5, this gives us 5 times 25x squared minus 9y squared. So, yeah, 15 definitely doesn't go into it because 3 doesn't go into 25 evenly. Okay. So from here, you have a binomial left over. Can you take the square root of the first term? It is... 5x. Can you take the square root of the second term? It is 3y. It's separated with subtraction, so this is going to give you 5 times 5x plus 3y times 5x minus 3y. So just like the last one I said, these are interchangeable, so you could also give 5 times 5x minus 3y times 5x plus 3y. It's up to you. For 28, you have 8x to the fourth power plus 40x cubed plus 50x squared. Your greatest common factor between these three terms is 2x squared. So this factors out to be 2x squared times 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. You have a perfect square trinomial here because you can take the square root of that 4x squared, which is 2x. You can take the square root of that 25, which is 5. Multiply this by positive 2 because that 20 is positive, And it gives you the 20x. So it gives you that middle term. So this is going to factor out fully to be 2x squared times 2x plus 5 to the second power. Again, we're using that perfect square trinomial method for this one. So a squared plus 2 times a times b plus b squared is the 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. So it just factors out to be a plus b to the second power. For 29, we have 8x cubed plus 8x squared y plus 2xy squared. Your greatest common factor from these three terms is 2x. So this gives us 2x times 4x squared plus 4xy plus y squared. Sign in the middle is positive. This is a perfect square trinomial because you can take the square root of both the first and the last term. So this gives you 2x times 2x plus y to the second power.